Just look at those cards sitting in your hand, being all lazy. They could be working out. They could be getting stronger, faster, buffer. What if I told you there was a way to do just that? Welcome back everyone to Random Slots. We have another Rune Strike deck breakdown for you today and coupling it with last week, we're still on the faith train. But before we jump into the actual build itself and what the ideas are behind it, just wanted to throw out there that if you're watching this video on YouTube, definitely would appreciate a like and subscribe down below. Or if you want to check out live Rune Strike content, you can see, well, just below me also, contact information for hitting me up on Twitch over at RTChompGG, or feel free to join the Random Thoughts Discord so that we can talk more Rune Strike. Infomercial stuff aside, let's talk about Faith. So, as mentioned, this is the second Faith build that I've been looking at in recent weeks. Somebody on a recent YouTube video said, hey, can you do some Faith builds? So, here we are. If you want to see other Rune Strike builds, let me know down in the comments. This one is intended to be a hand buff deck. The subject came up mostly in the context of the discussion surrounding Zephyr Knight. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this sort of concept in general, like a, from a general game standpoint, but I decided to give it a whirl. There aren't too many effects actually in Rune Strike to really buoy this strategy. But if you watched last time's video, I had alluded to a number of comments about how I think Faith would probably be better served just as a general control deck. This is moving in that direction. It's not quite there yet. There's definitely some rough edges here that are just part of what this particular deck is trying to accomplish. And what's that? Well, we're talking specifically about Odin and we're talking about Angel of Vitality. These two cards are one of, well, I think they're the only cards in the game that buff your hand. So if you can manage to stick an early angel or you can maybe accelerate out an Odin, get to that momentarily, you can then turn things such as the aforementioned Zephyr Knight or a Centaurian into absolute monsters. Oh, and by the way, I've heard that Horus guy is pretty good. Remember when he was, <laughs> he had four attack? You too can remember that time. Overall, the deck is just playing a control-ish game plan. Now, you clearly still have your conditionings because you're a faith deck. You have all of your effects, which I also neglected to mention, Pharaoh's Guard. But you have all of this row of five right here. And presumably, we'll see others in the future. So you're going to have to keep an eye out for that. So what do you want to look out for in those new releases? You want to be looking for things with Warcry, but that care about the stats. Now... The other obvious thing is we want more Odin and Angel effects that actually buff the things in your hand because problem number one with this build, you, you know, you only got two cards that actually do this effect. If you get very many more, this could be a problematic archetype, but right now, sometimes you're just playing, as mentioned, a plain control deck. Now, you have some other concessions to the archetype, notably Miracle. I'm on record on many occasions, I really don't like this card. But you can get a lot of value out of it in specific builds. I think this is one of them because obviously getting War Cries over again is pretty good, especially when it's something like Odin or just having resurrecting angels resurrect again can be super impactful. If you can't even manage those, throwing a resurrect even on something as ridiculous as a Prince of Rags or Tribal Elder can be very impactful as well simply because, hey, you have a lot of high-end stuff, and it's not uncommon towards the end of the game that you're only playing a single card a turn. So it's important to maintain your tempo early in the game, because if you don't, you're going to fall behind and find yourself unable to claw back into it, despite playing, you know, 8, 10 Centurions or bigger. It can be a problem. You do have issues, and you'll see in some of the, the gameplay later on, that dealing with large size minions in varying stat distributions can be very challenging. Notably, there's a siren. You'll know it when you see it. It was difficult to remove. But overall, this deck is pretty fun. It is a somewhat unique concept. I think it, it's worth giving it a try. If you're looking for a faith build to actually try out and you're able to support the notably legendary heavy focus, because look, Angel, have to have if you're building hand buff, Legendary. Odin, have to have if you're playing hand buff. Legendary. Horus, 
maybe don't have to have, but you should. Legendary, Decimate. Okay, well, you just need Decimate. By Light's Grace. Pharaoh's Guard. Again, some of these things you could do without, but realistically, you're just hampering yourself. Honestly, this build was, I originally wanted to play Vangelis because somebody was talking about Vangelis. And I said, oh yeah, Angel's there. Oh wait, we don't get access to Odin. And Faith right now is the only Light Order champion. So we got to do what we got to do. But that's the general idea of the deck. You'll see how the gameplay plays out. I have some commentary this time as opposed to just the gameplay. If you prefer that, again, let me know down in the comments if you want to see it that way or silent games. But that's going to do it for this time. So as always, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And Black Lives Matter. Okay, so we're up against Keeper. Again, we're looking for earlier plays. We did find some. Notably the conditioning. The others, I wouldn't even really qualify. Whoa. Whoa. So are we up against... Fae Keeper? Interesting. Oh yeah, this is aggro. This is aggro, all right. We were on the play. But we're not... I don't know. We have a very slow hand to try and deal with this. Um, unfortunately, I think we have to A1. We have to A1. Because we need to try and keep pace. Oh, jeez. This is bad. This is real bad. So we're going to do this. Now, they can just nuke it, which I kind of expect. Yep. If we had a Zephyr Knight here, I'd feel fine. Well, not fine, but I'd feel a lot better. As it stands, <laughs> this ain't looking good. Oh, boy. Um, Bright Song does not kill this. Do we decimate? I think we bright song. We're going to risk the additional A1. It's the only clock we have at this stage. Interesting. I'm not a fan of this, but since the buff, no, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. So while we would love to set up a bigger Horus, like, do we wipe the board again? What do we do next turn? Probably an Angel. So we kill probably this. I would have liked to have gotten the Owl. They're just going to draw too many cards. And A3 out of Keeper in an aggressive deck is actually really strong because you can present so many threats and then you don't have to worry about trying to keep control elements. You just don't need it. I forgot this gives Suffer. I don't know that it really matters here. I think we do this because we got to clear the board. I'm not expecting an enormous... We do this. I'm not expecting an enormous uh, Blitz minion out of here or something like that. One thing we haven't seen yet is Nether Pixie, which I kind of expect to see. That's an Impuza. Wow. That's actually kind of bad for us. Does three? Impuza's pretty good. Impuza's pretty good. Against us, anyway. So I don't quite know how this interacts. Do we lose three health? We lose three health, okay. Um, we could decimate. I think we do this. So if we play Odin, 
doesn't really matter. It's just a body. Right now, like, we're not buff... Buffing these matters, but it doesn't matter in the sense that we're not... Um, we're not buffing, like, a Zephyr Knight or something. If we decimate, we get all of these... We're going to resurrect here. I'm very curious how... how Impuza interacts with this. I don't know how Impuza interacts with this. That's a demonic warlord. Or overlord. Overlord. And we're going to bright song that, quite obviously. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 18. All right, we, we don't have enough anyway now. Oh, you know what? So this will do nothing. This will do nothing because it's it has to go in that spot, so it's going to overwrite it. If anybody was confused what I was trying to figure out earlier. We're going to take another three. They're at four. They could Spirit Surge, I guess. The yeah, Owl Blocking means nothing. I mean, this is going to die due to the Suffer anyway. Got extra blood. If you kill it, like, if you activate a blood ability, because, yeah, I was going to say, they're doing this so they can gain health. So they're at seven. GG. I was about to say, I think we got them. GG. Okay, we're on the play this time. We're up against Ramses. We're going to get rid of these, because this needs help to be relevant. We'd rather draw it after we have a board and a horse. It's going to take forever to get online. So we open with a Prince of Rags. That's pretty good. Pretty good start. So I'm not sure offhand how the Ramses matchup should go, but we do have double conditioning, which feels pretty good. Feels pretty strong. Now... This seems to be a more aggressive Ramsey's list, so we do have to be cognizant of just overextending ourselves, overutilizing our life as a resource. It's a resource, but resources run out. It's not an infinite resource. Really? That is a bold move, Cotton. So unfortunately, we're taking more damage from this, but we probably will... Well, you know what? We might play the Angel instead of the Zephyr Knight. Just to get the second buff. Then we'll have a four attack Zephyr Knight. Along with seven health, which pushes it well out of range of like a ton of things. Instead, we could play it here. This thing is kind of a big risk. This is a big danger to us. Um, I think we're still going to go with this. Like I said, we have to be careful of over-leveraging our life. This might be aggressive. I'm banking on the fact that we can Zephyr Knight and Righteous Wrath later. They didn't commit any further threats, which is interesting. Um, again, we're going to play off. We're going to bank the blood. We don't need to use the shield right this second. We are representing much more damage to their face than they are to ours right now. But, chaos. Tons of removal. Now, thankfully, this dodges a lot of the removal. Ah, they had to wipe the board. It's good for us. I will take it. Um, I think we're going to do this. Let's get a threat online. I don't think we need to invest more in trying to power up our attack. So the idea here is that we're going to save for A3s or possible, or excuse me, A2s or possible A3s. This is obnoxious because we have to wait for it to get buffed before we can remove it. 
We'll body block because we want the blood, and then this is big enough. We could hold it for more buffs. But I think seven is good enough. Seven is good enough. Now, we could have A3'd the Masochist. Eh. We'll, we'll find a way to live with ourselves. There's a conditioning out of them. So we'll kill this thing. They're at 41. Our clock isn't going to change significantly, I don't think. We're doing 9, 11 a turn. We went to 12. I don't, our clock is not changing significantly unless they remove this, which, I mean, is possible. They have three cards in hand. We're going to drop the Angel next turn. I'm just debating whether to Miracle this. Now, we could have played the Angel, and honestly, in retrospect, I think what we should have done was play the Angel instead of hitting this with the Wrath, and then just hit it with the Wrath next. All right, so I think we remove this. We are going to get the Angel online, though. They're not going to kill us in one turn from 50, so we can bank the blood for now, so we have more, more options on a future turn. We could have played the Horus and pushed more damage, but that can come out of hand. So I'm not too worried, plus, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, they don't keep the attack, so Righteous Wrath isn't quite as juicy against this as it is against, say, other Faith players, but, you know. So we will get the Horus online here, though. They're now at 12, so we have them dead, unless they do something to prevent their life total. They have to preserve their life total, they have to clear our board, or otherwise we just end them. But it's a funny story, Righteous Wrath can go face. Just because we can. GG. GG. All right, first opponent up, we are going second into Emrys. I actually kind of like this opener, but I expect this to be a difficult matchup, to be honest. We get the Elder to try and accelerate things. We don't have a lot of early game. This deck kind of lacks the ability to remove bigger threats. And that's my main concern. Plus, we're going second here. There's a lot of things here that are not adding up in our favor. Not to say that it's impossible, but this is not really how I'd want to start. Divine Harvest, you say. Well, that's a thing that can happen. So they will eventually put a body there, obviously. I'm not, I don't know, I don't, I'm not really sure about this thing. I'm not a huge fan of this card, but it could take over the game against us specifically. So we're going to get an angel online. This is a pretty good angel. We hit a lot of parts that we'd want to hit. Now, we're going to go for conviction. This isn't really a all-in on A1 build. You have to be careful about overdoing it. This is a problem. How are we dealing with that? At 6 health, we're going to have to decimate it. I think we have to decimate it. I don't know how else we're going to deal with it. Because we're not going to get it buffed in time. I think we do something like this. So if we hit it for 3, it'll go to 5. It's possible they buff this on the back end out of range. This also lets us continue to apply pressure. But we're not going to have enough blood anytime soon unless we top deck by Light's Grace. So the game plan here is we're going to have to like one for one decimate it, which <laughs> feels awful. Yeah. So there's the feast. I don't know how we get out of this. The... the Siren presents an enormous threat to us. A very obnoxious one. Now, we could win the 50-50 here. And the angel ends up... Oh boy, yeah, we're never killing this thing. This is actually a serious issue. So I think we have to continue to commit threats. 
and hope that we don't end up on the wrong end of the stick like we did here. We're never actually going to be able to remove this. We don't have anything in the deck that just says, yeah, kill that thing. So a buffed up Siren like this is problematic, especially because even though we're pushing damage, their A1 will keep them in the game way longer than we're really comfortable with. And we're going to have to do silly things like play the Zephyr Knight this turn. That's a Sobek. We like big butts. That much is certain. Um, we got to keep continuing to commit threats, like I said. And they keep hit. Oh, man. We're losing the 50-50s here. Because it's a 50-50 between the 5 cost here and the 5 cost here. And of course, we're keeping the Angel alive, which is not what we need. And to be honest, I'm tempted to hold the Horus and go like Angel, Odin, Horus. I think that's probably our best bet. That is unfortunate. He gained 18 life. That is, as we say in the business, a lot. <laughs> as mentioned before, we're just straight up never killing this thing. The bad news here is, is, and why I was committing threats into the Siren, is we have to keep above a certain amount. Emrys is not necessarily going to have, or it kind of does have the same problem we do. It's They're not necessarily going to have an easy time just straight up removing things, but they were able to hear, which means, yeah, we're, we're kind of in trouble. Kind of in trouble here. Um, I'm not so much worried about the reverse damage coming in. The big issue here is trying to actually punch through. They're going to gain another 18 life. And they're actually going to take over the life lead at this stage. So yeah, we're, uh, we have a few different problems to contend with here. And that's before you account for the fact that now they're basically going to be able to drop blockers every turn. Now the advantage we do have is this. We do have a one cost body to be the sacrificial lamb here. Granted, it's a 5-5 Prince of Rags, which is kind of funny. So we just got to hope that we can manage to keep pushing, but they have two turns. They, they essentially have 36 more life, assuming that they don't have lethal with an A3. All right, so that kills the angel. We're not going to get up to, obviously, 18 attack. Like, that's not happening. And Bright Song is hilariously useless into this siren. Um, we also cannot miracle something of relevance. Maybe we decimate miracle and then hope. That didn't actually kill this. Lol. Maybe we needed to wait. So we're, we clearly have to miracle now. Um, I'm going to take 11, 12, 13. Uh, 18. We might be dead, actually. We might be dead now because they can hit us for 18 with an A3. 11, 12, 29, 30, 37. Not quite dead, but pretty close. Now, they may fear... Well, they could do both an A1 and an A3. They might fear something happening, and I guess hypothetically now Horus kills this, but it's not going to, obviously. And we actually don't kill them with a Horus hit, unless they kind of do nothing. Are we dead now? No, we're not dead. Okay, so we hit for 22... And seven, and seven's another 14, so this should be lethal. GG. 
We managed to squeak it out. I mean, that was a strange Emmer's build, but pretty solid. GG.